Is it strange that you only notice when something is missing that is important to you? Since I've been living in the city, I'm missing a certain sound. Do you hear what's missing? It's bird song. I associate with it the garden of my childhood and I'm very much looking forward to living in a place where it is part of everyday life again, someday. Until then, I have to think of something that at least keeps the memory alive. And it just so happens that I found this wonderful fabric with a bird print at a fabric market. It's actually an upholstery fabric, but I thought I could also make a heavy Victorian walking skirt out of it. As the fabric is extremely wide, I now have a rather heavy piece of fabric here, which I don't necessarily want to put into the washing machine as a whole. That's why I did a little wash test, because I definitely wanted to test whether the fabric shrinks or not. While the fabric test went along with a normal wash, I started thinking about the pattern. I took the pattern from the book Authentic Victorian Fashion Patterns, because I like the illustration which goes along. I copied the pattern in Claude ID and adapted it to my body measurements. This is a great advantage for someone like me who has a rough idea of pattern design and can work well according to instructions, but still makes many decisions based on visual aspects. I can quickly judge whether I like something or not. Finally, I briefly tested whether I really like the print on the cut and then prepared the pattern for printing. I make sure that I waste relatively little paper even though this is quite difficult with a big skirt. The pattern pieces were printed out quickly and then not so quickly assembled and cut. In the meantime, the fabric was washed in the washing machine, because, stupidly, the fabric shrinks a lot. Therefore, despite the weight of the entire fabric, I decided to wash it and I'm damn glad I did, because the fabric has become much softer and more unstable, which is why I definitely need to line it, which I had considered not to do before. I ironed the fabric directly while it was wet because I don't have that much space to hang and dry it properly and I had to iron it anyway, so I did it this way. After the fabric was finally dry and ironed, I started to lay out and cut out the pattern pieces. This time I trusted my previous calculations and didn't widen the cut as I did with the petticoat. I just added the seam allowance and luckily that was enough. For the side pieces I made sure that the birds were at a similar height so that the two sides wouldn't look weirdly displaced against each other. After the upper fabric was cut, I also cut the lining and canvas to reinforce them. The canvas is unfortunately not as strong and light as the tarlatan would be, but here in Germany it is surprisingly difficult to get tarlatan. That's why I had to use this canvas, which I hope will have a similar effect. Next, I basted the individual layers together. First, I basted the canvas to the top fabric and then stitched the it to the top edge and the sides. I made sure that only catch 
one thread on the front and so to use a very inconspicuous yarn in terms of color. This way the reinforcement is hardly visible. Then I basted the lining over it and marked the seams along the outer seams with a running stitch. I used to skip these steps because I couldn't imagine that the benefits actually justified the extra work. But I was taught better. The chalk marks were barely visible later, but the threads were. And the stitching kept the layers in place, even in the most tangled positions. I really wouldn't have thought that. And above all, I wouldn't have thought that it would make it easier to sew. Which, when you think about it, is logical. You just don't accidentally sew the lining into plates. I marked the darts with the thread at the tip and then pinned them together. They were quickly closed with the machine. The side seams were also sewn quickly, so quickly in fact, that I forgot to, the opening for the pocket and the underlay and had to open them again. But before that I prepared both. For the pocket I first stitched the fabric to the lining and added the tape to attach the pocket later to the waistband. Everything was finished with a princess seat. I sewed the underlay together on one side only and then ironed it flat. By unpicking the already closed side seams, the seams were already perfectly prepared and sewing in the underlay was super easy. 
With the puppet it should have been like this, but on one side I messed it up quite a bit and had to redo it. Somehow I had rubbed the material and caused wrinkles. Then came the really time-consuming part. Unfortunately, the outer fabric was fraying just by looking at it, so I couldn't avoid overcasting the seam allowance. To do so, I shortened the seam allowance of the lining a bit and felt the seam allowance. Always making sure that I only got the lining while stitching. After searching in vain for my sewing needle, I set to work with another one. <laughs> For some reason I'm super fond of working on the floor, but after my feet were out of my grasp due to my sitting position I decided to sit down a bit more comfortably and move to an armchair, which was a smart idea in hindsight. When I didn't feel like having the whole skirt on my lap, I sewed the waistband together. It consists of the outer fabric, a layer of canvas for reinforcement and the lining fabric, which I sewed together by hand. I also attached the underlay to the lining so that it couldn't accidentally slip over to the front. I then attached the finished waistband to the skirt, placing the excess material at the back of the skirt into a double box pleat. I sized this by eye as I knew I needed the front part of the skirt to be smooth and the rest to be accommodated somehow to the length of the waistband. As I said before, the fabric frays terribly, so I hemmed the folded seam allowance down. I then straightened the hem of the skirt and shortened it just a little. Actually, the skirt was supposed to be shorter and I had only left the hem longer as a precaution. But I liked the skirt at this length. 
I finished the hem of the skirt with a woolen braid. Since the skirt is so long, it will probably touch the floor more often and the braid will be the first to wear out and can easily be replaced without the skirt losing length. Interestingly, the braid is woven in such a way that it can be perfectly folded in half. The crease is basically woven in, which makes it folding super easy. I came across these by chance because I only knew the English name for these braids and originally didn't find anything comparable in Germany or Europe. Until I looked for translations, which weren't exactly right, but after googling for each translation, I came up with Voltresse. And that was pretty much what I was looking for. I thought. Now I know that there is a better solution, a brush braid, but that will be used for the next skirt. Anyway, I sewed the wool braid in place with long stitches and folded it over to the inside. Normally you would put it around the hem edge, but I foolishly cut the lining shorter than the main fabric, because the skirt was supposed to be shorter, so I had to cover up the unsewn edge of the lining. So in the future, I should remember not to make the lining shorter than the outer fabric. Because who knows how long I would like the skirt to be. The hooks and eyes were sewn on in a matter of minutes. Two at the waistband and two along the underlay. So that no one can accidentally peek in. I still have to get some embroidery thread to make the eyelets look nice. But for now, they should hold. And last, I did my least favorite task, right away without even putting the skirt down, because otherwise it would probably have lain there for a long time. I removed all the basting threads and cut off loose ends. I didn't dare to try on the skirt the whole time, until now, which is not a very smart idea in case something doesn't fit but I was lucky it fits like a glove. This is kind of funny since gloves never fit me. <laughs> And just in time for the beginning of spring, the skirt is ready. At least until the moment I ripped open the hem. Unfortunately, I wore the skirt outside for the first time without hip pads. But the hem was a bit too long at the back and I somehow got caught in with my heel. So I had to repair this piece. Luckily, it was done quickly and I didn't ha even have to take the skirt off for it. Now, however, I only wear it with hip pads underneath, so that this doesn't happen again. <laughs>